Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be explaining and going over why I use multiple EQs in series throughout a channel. Why don't I just use one? Well, it comes down to a bunch of reasons. Um, the first one is because you can. Um, you know, computers are a lot more powerful than they were, you know, a couple years ago. And before we would we used to ha only be able to have like one EQ, so you kind of have to like make that count, and it would add like you know uh, a bunch of weird phasiness to it. But you know modern EQs are such high quality, and you have the horsepower to have multiple ones. So why don't I just have one that has all the EQing that I want to do? Well. I kind of like to EQ in steps, and I'll demonstrate. So I have a piece of material. It, it depends, like if you're on your master bus or if you're in a single channel. This is a this is a bus of sorts. Let's give it a listen. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, my limiter's on. Right. So you know, you can do this in multiple steps. So the first one, maybe you know, depending on what you're doing, you want to high pass. Let's just say, uh, you know, thirty hertz. Um, 24 dB per octave roll off, right? And then you'll want to, you know, give it a gentle roll off here, depending on what's going on in your other tracks, or if you're uh, mastering. And you know, there's that, and this can be like a preparation for later stages of processing. All right, and uh, no, I'll, I'll do that later. So that's um. That's our uh, our first EQ, and you know I can have probably like a hundred of these in a project, no problem. So let's just leave that, and we'll double click it to make it go away, uh, or to collapse it, and then we'll add another one, right? And this will be one for maybe like enhancement. get a nice uh, a shelf going on there. Nope, not a low shelf. High shelf. I'm all switched around here. Right? And with this, we can essentially like A, B it. Right? So we have this one begin A, B. And then, you know, you can do some other things. Um, typically at this stage, you would, uh, let's just say, you would add uh, processing that's going to change the way uh, the sound sounds. And we use compression uh, also. And uh, let's go bus and, you know, we'll set it to that. Turn off auto gain. And I'll leave it on. Right. So. What that's doing is that is, you know, compressing, but also to the to the frequency domain, it's making some changes. You know, things are getting squished, things are getting, uh, you know, unsquished, things are getting louder, not unsquished, things are, you know, the, the dynamics are changing. So how we perceive those frequencies change. And one thing you need to kind of, no, is if I were to go back and make any changes to this EQ, it would, you know, be amplified and would cause the compressor to behave in a different way. So you don't want that. Right, and this is kind of what I like to call uh, compressor conditioning, uh, or, you know, you, you, you condition the audio in such a way that it will feed into the compressor and will kind of uh, behave in a way that is pleasing to you. That, but that's a topic for another video. Actually, I think I did a video about that. Not too sure, though. But anyway, so we have uh, compression there. And uh, yeah, from here, we can add another EQ. Right? It's, uh, it's changed it a little bit. Right, it's done some some things to that clap. I'm just, this is just for the sake of example. It's not, you know, super surgical and critical. I'm just trying to make things a little bit obvious uh, so you kind of know what's going on. Right, 
right, so now I'm getting that kind of, you know, maybe, uh, yeah, just fine adjustments. some stuff to the low end there maybe make that just a little bit more gentle just for you know the sake of habit right and uh you know you can kind of go throughout the chain and see what you're doing right and uh you know this seems a little bit quiet on the high end but you know i want other things to kind of come through but maybe i took a little bit too much off But I have no, you know, frame of reference. Um, from here, right, you can add in another EQ. So that was uh, this first one here. This first EQ is just a, uh, like a, just what you do, um, well, what I do when I have, you know, a complex piece of musical material is, uh, you know, a high pass, low pass, and a little notch here for that low end. Right. And I can turn that off. Right. You notice how the, the low end gets a little bit muddy, right? Right. And I, yeah, that's just kind of, that's from Chris Lake, for those that are wondering. Um, you know, a lot of frequencies kind of accumulate in there uh, for, you know, dance music. Um, and when you process that, that sound just gets uh, exacerbated. Um, and, uh, yeah, that kind of, that's why I do it because I know down the line, if I don't do that for certain pieces of uh, material, it's not going to, uh, fare well. Right. So this first one is just a general, just, you know, it's kind of like, uh, if you're working with clay, you just take the clay and smash it down on the desk and, uh, you know, you get it ready. And then... Uh, this one right here is more of a, a tonal uh, shaping, right? I'll just do that. Right, so I'll do this one first. Right, this is a tonal shaping. Right, and I further kind of change things around, things like that. So imagine all these uh, EQs stacked up together. It'd be, a, be a nightmare. And then this way I can, if I want, I can kind of go back and, um, you know, be like, ah, I'll move this up because I want the compressor to, you know, bite the top end a little bit more. I don't know, whatever. And uh, things like that. You know, you can always kind of go back and, like, audition uh, by turning it on and off. It's pretty cool. And then we have a compressor here just for, you know, just to, you know, reiterate the example of how processing will affect the frequency domain. And then I have uh, this one here. It's the one here. Right, and this is where I'm getting into, I guess, uh, you know, uh, surgical cla uh, slash creative slash like finalizing sort of things. Um, I could go on with this, but I like to keep these separate just because I can. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be exploring the mid and side um, aspects of the signal. Right, and I'll, uh, you know, kind of roll off the low end here, audition. Right, kind of taking away. Right, and then rolling that off a little bit, just because I like... I don't like my stuff to be that wide. But this is like just negative 3 dB of adjustments. Right, there's that uh, really cool sound there. Right, I can actually accentuate that a little bit. Right, and this will be one of my focuses when, you know, if I have something 
just pretend this is like the the final step. This will be the thing that I, I will, you know, want to accentuate and adjust depending on what else is going on, right? I'm just using the mouse wheel. Right, it might be up here too a little bit. Oh, right here. It might need to be a steeper uh, roll off there. Right, and now we have a, a bit of clarity uh, and uh, roundness on the low end. As per my tastes, and uh, yeah, we've you know we've effectively uh, done that. Uh, further, we can, you know, and this is just for the sake of example, we can kind of EQ the left and right separately. I mean, left and right. All right so we can do some panning. You, you kind of only want to pan uh, the, the the top end here. I mean, you know, we have the separate EQs for the left and right, and what this does is it it adds uh, a little bit of you know naturalness to it. Right. Right, I don't want it that much. Plus and minus three dB. Right. And all these things go together. It's like, you know, why, why so many EQs? Well, just because I'm weird, I guess. Um, but, you know, I come from a time where, you know, having this many, you know, you start getting crackles and stuff like that. Right. I've effectively affected it too much. So I can always go back. And this is the beauty of it. I can really shape that in. You know, having all these in one uh, plug-in window would be a nightmare for me. Right? And then, yeah, that's a, that's a use case. You know, probably more gentle. Or maybe not so much gentle. Right, and uh, things like that, uh, and that would be uh, it for that. So, you know what I might as well do? I might as well just kind of just play it in uh, sequence here. All right. So first, EQ. I'll just I'll just stop talking and play them. And you can kind of see um, what the effect is. Right. And that just fits well to me in my ears in this imaginary um, uh, group of instruments that I have. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.